Hi, I have another story for you in the Biscuit Buttons and Pickles series. And this one is called Ragdoll Press by E.J. Taylor. Ruby Buttons jumped out of bed and ran to the bedroom window. It was a cold morning in January and the glass was frosty, so Ruby rubbed a clear spot and peeped through. It's snowing, she cried, and hurried to dress. Violet, she said, wake up, it's snowing. Violet Pickles slept soundly in the next bed. Ruby pulled up her stockings and fumbled with the buttons of her dress. She called again, wake up, Violet, you're missing the snow. Violet groaned and buried her head under her pillow. Five more minutes, she said. Well, I'm not going to miss a second of it. Ruby put on her coat and ran downstairs to the kitchen. Miss Biscuit was feeding Hannah and James, the pet geese, who always slept inside during the cold weather. Good morning, said Miss Biscuit. Where are you going in such a hurry? Good morning, said Ruby, opening the back door of Ivy Cottage. I'm going to make a snowman. Violet was sitting at the table reading a book when Ruby opened the back door and returned to the warm kitchen. Miss Biscuit was talking on the telephone, so Ruby spoke to Violet in a whisper. Look at my snowman, she said, brushing the snow from her coat and pulling off her boots. Violet turned a page. Very nice, she muttered without looking up. Actually, it's a snow woman, Ruby said. She hung up her coat and sat down at the table. Miss Biscuit was just saying goodbye. That was your teacher at Fernhill School, she told Ruby and Violet. There won't be any classes until they clear the snow. Hooray, Ruby cried, smiling. Violet closed her book. The end, she said with a sigh. I love happy endings. She unfolded her napkin and placed it carefully in her lap. Someday I'm going to write novels just like that, and they'll all have happy endings. Violet looked at the clock. We'd better have breakfast, she said. We don't want to be late for school. Later that morning, Miss Biscuit began some baking, so Ruby offered to do the weekend shopping at the general store. Violet had already started a new book, but Ruby persuaded her to come along. They put on their coats and were about to leave when Hannah began to make a loud honking noise. I think she wants to come with us, said Ruby. She won't be any trouble. Ruby ran to get Hannah's hat and scarf while Violet took the shopping basket and went to collect the sledge, the sled, from the garden shed. Miss Biscuit waved and off they went. A brisk walk in the snow soon brought them to Mr. Bickerstaff's store. The bell over the door danced and jingled as they stepped inside and stamped the snow off their boots. Good morning, said Mr. Bickerstaff. Come in and get warm. He put down his flower ladle and tied up the sack. Ruby gave Mrs. Biscuit's shopping list to Mr. Bickerstaff and joined Violet and Hannah by the fire. Ruby and Violet warmed their hands by the wood stove and listened while Mr. Bickerstaff brought them up to date with all the Fern Hill news. Farmer Duff had bought a new cow, and Mrs. Brown was expecting a baby in the spring. They're hoping for a girl this time after the three boys, said Mr. Bickerstaff, going to call her Jessie after the grandmother. A baby in the spring, said Violet. Imagine that. We never know what's going on around here. When he had finished the shopping list, Mr. Bickerstaff lifted a trap door which led down to the cellar. I've been saving something for Hannah, he said. Wait here and I'll be just a minute. Can we come? asked Ruby, eager to have a look. All right, said Mr. Bickerstaff, but watch your step.
The cellar was large and filled with sacks of potatoes and barrels of apples and onions. Mr. Bickerstaff found an empty storage, an empty orange box filled with loose straw and handed it to Ruby. I thought this would make a good bed for Hannah. Oh yes, Ruby said, it's lovely. Thank you. What's this over here? Violet asked, pointing to a funny contraption with a crank handle. That's a portable printing press, Mr. Bickerstaff said. I used it years ago for making up advertisements. Does it still work? Oh yes, Mr. Bickerstaff replied. It just needs some oil. It's been sitting down here collecting dust for a few years. I keep meaning to get rid of it. Nobody uses these old things anymore. I could use it, Violet said in an excited voice. Oh, Mr. Bickerstaff, would you let me have it? Of course, if you really want it. But it's a bit heavy to carry. Why don't you ask Miss Biscuit? If she doesn't mind, I'll bring it out to you tomorrow. Come on, Ruby, Violet said quite suddenly. Let's go home now. Ruby picked up Hannah's new bed and hurried upstairs after Violet. Ruby and Violet packed the shopping onto their sled and headed for home. They hadn't gotten far when Ruby paused for a moment. Violet, she said in a puzzled voice, what are you going to do with that old printing press? Well, began Violet, I've got the most wonderful idea for starting my career as a writer. Really? said Ruby. Oh, please tell me what it is. If I have a printing press, Violet explained, I can start my own newspaper. A newspaper, Ruby said in amazement. Yes, said Violet, a newspaper for children. I've got so many ideas, and you can help me. Me, said Ruby. Yes, Violet replied. I'll need an assistant. What do you think? Ruby thought for a while and then said, I would feel very honored to work on your newspaper. Good, said Violet. Let's hurry home. I can't wait to tell Miss Biscuit. The snow was deep and the journey home was slow. Violet and Ruby were getting tired and pulled the sled to the side of the road for a rest. They were about to sit down when they heard someone shouting from the hillside above them. Hello down there. Who's that, said Violet. Ruby turned to look. I think it's Skeeter, she said. I wonder what he's doing way out there. It was Skeeter and he waved to them. Watch me, he shouted, watch me. He jumped forward and started down the steep hillside. He shouldn't run so fast, said Ruby. He'll crash into a tree if he's not careful. Ruby, said Violet, he's not running. I think he's trying to ski. They watched as her friend raced toward them. I can't look, said Violet, covering her eyes. Skeeter, Ruby called. You must slow down. You're going to fall and hurt yourself. It was too late. Skeeter suddenly lost his balance and came rolling down the hillside like a large snowball landing with a thump, deep in a snowdrift. Skeeter was sitting up when they reached him, muttering to himself and still a little dazed. What happened, he said. You've had an accident, said Ruby. Your skis are broken. Are you all right? I think so, said Skeeter, rubbing his head. I didn't see that turn. I had it all worked out. I was sure I could do it. I guess it's back to the drawing board for me. It's getting dark, said Ruby. Maybe you should walk home with us. We'll take the shortcut through Fern Hill. It's not far. Violet helped Skeeter up. He could walk all right, but his arm was very bruised. Ruby picked up the broken skis. Leave them, Skeeter, she said sadly. I don't think you should try skiing again.